Hi, my name is uh, Sivaraman. I'm an orthopedic spinal surgeon at the London Independent Hospital. It's one of the three BMI hospitals in London which provide spinal service. Just briefly talk about uh, neck pain and back pain, which is a common thing. The neck pain and back pain commonly can be related to just the muscular strain. And as we are human beings, we are some of the evolutionally, some of the very few animals who walk upright with two legs. And because of that, there is a lot of stress which goes through the spine and it has an uh, effect um, in uh, early years. And because of this, uh, we develop uh, some fatigue and when the muscles get weaker, we develop pain in the neck or in the low back. Almost many people, about 80% of people in their sort of 30s and 40s would have experienced an element of neck pain and back pain, which are usually self-limiting conditions and can be treated expectantly. A specialist gets involved when you have a doubt, when you need a reassurance. Also, when you have associated problems in the hands or arms or back pain with leg pain, or in extremely rare circumstances when you have bowel or bladder affection, you have to get in touch straight away. If you are having problem with the neck or in the low back with associated pain radiating into the sort of shoulder intrascapular region or in the lower back radiating down to the leg, probably it's a good idea to see a specialist. There is a myth always spinal surgeon means equals operation. It's not the case. Spinal surgeons many a time sees the patients, reassures the patients, investigates the patient appropriately, puts a diagnosis and points them in the right direction for uh, other forms of treatment like physical therapy or sometimes if the pain has been going on for a few uh, weeks then some spinal injections can be extremely helpful. It is nothing but putting injections in the place where there is a problem. It is like taking anti-inflammatory orally Instead, you are giving that in the spot where the problem is after identifying with appropriate imaging. It's great that in this institution we have uh, all the appropriate investigative tools like a high resolution MRI, high resolution CT scanner, uh, we have a DEXA scanning uh, on site and all the other imaging modalities uh, so that it supports our work as a spinal surgeons. The typical journey of a patient when they come in to see us is to a take an history, examine the patient and after examination we send them for appropriate investigations and they are seen immediately after the investigation within a day or two. And once we see them with the results of the investigation then we identify which are the common problems and then we uh, institute the appropriate treatment. Out of 10 patients that I see I would probably think I would hardly operate on one patient. So the myth of surgeon equals surgery is not correct. This is the spine, human spine, which has got about 33 joints uh, from sort of bottom of the head to the pelvis. And understandably, where the head and neck junction and where the neck joins the chest and also in the lower part of the spine, the stress going through the spine is extremely high. If you look at the discs in the front, these are the discs in the front and these are the joints in the back. It's like you have a tire in the front and a pair of rims at the back. When you have a slight deflation of the tire as we get older, because we lose water in these discs, we are putting a bit more strain on these rims. And when these have strain element, it gets inflamed, it causes a bit of muscle spasm, and then when they collapse a bit like that, they causes irritation of the nerve that produces the pain down the leg or in the arms. As a spinal surgeon, what we try and do is we identify which segment is a problem segment with appropriate investigations and now the gold standard is an MRI scan and we have an extremely a good MRI scanner on site here and once we look at the scanning, uh, we decide which level of the spine needs treatment. If you have tried about four to six weeks of treatment, then we could think about doing some spinal injections. It is done under a bit of sedation. As a day case procedure, it takes literally less than 10 minutes to do, but the patients get admitted and they come into theatre. This is a theatre, typical theatre, where they are uh, uh, lying down under image control and then we pass needles in the target areas which are the source of pain and we give the anti-inflammatory in the place where the problem is. It is a very safe procedure. 
it's one of the common procedures that we do and then they are sent for physical therapy and we have an amazing physiotherapy um, department in this hospital. Now as a surgeon, uh, when the simple things fail, we move on to surgical management and the surgical management is, as I said, is extremely rare. It's probably one in 10 patients if, if required. And if there is any pressure on the nerve or if there is any pressure in the lower spine, like a disc prolapse, after failing the conservative management, we think about surgery. There is a perception that spinal surgery is dangerous. And in my opinion, those were in the past. Now with the modern techniques and more and more, we are doing minimally invasive surgery. And in fact, at the London Independent, we strive for excellence with minimal access surgery in spines. To just give you an example, when we do minimal access surgery, these are one of the screws that could be used in the spine. These are called the pedicle screws. These are screws which we try and insert into the spine percutaneously. And this is done um, under x-ray guidance and image guidance with, with the help of uh, navigation sometimes. Uh, and we try and pass these screws uh, and then uh, achieve fusion. What is fusion? Fusion is nothing but a technique where when there is a problem with the joint, the joint has been moving quite a bit and has worn out, uh, the friction causes pain. So you want to stop the friction. And when you start trying to stop the friction in a particular motion segment, uh, we try and put some screws and rods and get the bones to heal together uh, so that it stops the pain. And in spine, it is one of the techniques that we use. And nowadays, we are more and more doing uh, uh, minimally invasive surgery percutaneously. And the recovery rate is much quicker and the complications are much lower. And again, there is a myth about complication rate in spinal surgery. It's extremely rare. Yes, when it happens, the impact can be a bit higher. Uh, the patients are warned about it and they do go through an informed consent process for this. The other thing I want to just touch upon is what are the techniques that we use here. We use cervical disc replacement in the neck. We use uh, cervical uh, stabilization techniques in the back of the neck for patients with compression of the nerves and spinal cord. And in the lumbar spine, we use uh, minimal access surgery to fuse the spine. And one of the newer techniques we use also here is when the patients have what we call spinal stenosis, when there is a pressure on the nerve, um, essentially when, when you have a deflated tire, when there is a pressure like that, now with minimally invasive techniques, we can put just a small wedge in between the spine like that to offload the joint to give relief of the spinal nerves. You can see about all these in the website, um, which uh, does um, uh, um, uh, give information to the patients. And um, I have to just reiterate again that the modern spinal surgery is not like the surgery which was 30 years ago. It is rather safe. And also the environment that we practice in now, particularly like places like London Independent Hospital where I'm, pra I'm practicing, we uh, do it as a team and it is a teamwork and um, we have uh, high class professionals who look after yourselves.